So hi guys, this is Marma Pumaos and today we're going to have my video reactions about our lesson 1 and lesson 2. So first we're going to have a short discussions about the topic of each lesson and then let's proceed to what I have understood about the topic. So yeah, here it is. So for lesson 1, we have the first topic titled Microprocessor and Microcontroller. So here it talks about the definitions of the two, the components of Microprocessor and Microcontroller, and then the general purposes of Microprocessor and Microcontroller, and then the differences between Microprocessor and Microcontroller. Let's talk about the microprocessor versus microcontroller. So it's stated here that a microprocessor simply consists of the processor, the ALU, or which means arithmetic logic unit, the instruction decoder, and a few registers which are used to store data for mathematical and logical operations. While the microcontroller includes a processor, the ALU, instruction decoder, registers, good storage space, flash memory or room, RAM, general purposes of input and output pins, timer, interrupt controller, serial, serial communication, and it module, etc. So in short, microprocessor is an integrated circuit that contains all the functions of a central processing unit of a computer. While microcontroller, it is a computer present in a single integrated circuit which is dedicated to perform one task and execute one specific application. For the components of microprocessor and microcontroller, we have here CPU, which means central processing unit, and I.O., which means input, output, and bus, which, which are address bus and data bus. Then memory, we have here RAM and room, and then timer, interrupt serial port and parallel port so as an IT student we are already familiar with these things so these components are which are which are microprocessor and microcontroller are composed of so for general purposes of microprocessor and microcontroller so for microprocessor you can see the pictures that the CPU is stand alone while the RAM room IO port timer and serial mm. com port is separated from the CPU while the microcontroller you can see that the CPU RAM room input output port timer and serial serial com port is they are all in a single chip so but so by just looking at the pictures you can tell and analyze the differences between the two and lastly, for the differences between the microprocessor and microcontroller. So for the microprocessor, we have here the CPU is standalone, RAM, room, input, output, timer are separated. Designer can decide on the amount of room, RAM, and input, output ports. And then expensive, versatility, general purposes, high processing power, high power consumption, instruction set, Focus on processing intensive operations, typical 32 64 bit, typically deep pipeline 5 to 20 stages, while the microcontroller, CPU, RAM, ROM, input output timer are all in a single chip, fixed amount of on chip ROM, RAM, input output ports for application in which cost, power, and space are critical, single purpose control oriented and low processing power low power consumption bit level operations instruction set focus on control and bit level operations and typically 8 16 bit then typically single cycle two stage pipeline so just by reading it you can tell you can distinguish the differences of the two so all in all in this topic we are able to introduce the meaning of microprocessor and microcontroller we're able to distinguish the differences of the two which is good for us to determine the uses of the two so we're done with microprocessor versus microcontroller so now let's proceed to the second topic which is titled the technology today so here in in technology today it talks about some examples of technologies which are the digital gaming social networking and simulations and also it talks about why it need in a classroom and why those strategies are important 
for example of technology we have the first one which is digital gaming so here in digital gaming it stated that it states about the rules goals objectives of outcomes and feedback conflict competitions challenges oppositions and interactions so here examples of this can di digital gaming are those mobile games you have in your phone like ml clash of clans call of duties and those other mobile games you you used to have fun and interactions with others social networking so this is about social media site used for connecting with other people through the forms of social media apps like facebook messenger whatsapp and others and also this is used for communication with other people and also used for leisure time and for the simulation so this is about um, somehow looking forward of having new innovation to create to create a modified version of a real world situation so why technology needed in a room you know being a student learning is is a process not only with interactions with our teachers but it also through forms of using computers and other gadgets that can be useful for us students to have an easy access in searching and gathering information through the help of these technologies it helps us students to have an easy access to collect information which is also helpful for us and why are those strategies strategies are important it is because those strategies are important because it lead us to to have a deep learning you know simple learning can be accessed through various methods but acquiring complex skills requires social interactions in situation context which allows them to see how the var various parts of the process fit together so we're done with lesson one now let's proceed to lesson two which the titles are evolutions of microprocessors the 32 bit and 64 bit and and the last topic which is titled the microprocessor application so here for evolution of microprocessor it talks about the historical background of intel microprocessor von neumann machine the computer system components and intel 8085 architecture so for the historical background of intel microprocessor so here it talks about when those intel microprocessor was made or introduced and you can tell the differences when it comes to range the memory and where it is capable of and for von neumann machine so it is an early computer created by hungarian mathematician jan von neumann 1903 to 1957 it includes three components used by most computers today a cpu a slow to access storage area like a hard drive and secondary fast access memory ram the machine stored instructions as binary values and execute instructions sequen sequentially and for the computer system components we have here the memory and we already know that memory it is where the data was stored and the input output which is this is used to input and output instructions of data arithmetic and logic unit which performs arithmetic operations such as additions and, sub and sub subtraction and also performs logical operations and or sort shift rotate and we have the control unit which, which is coordinates the operations of the computers and we have the system inter interconnections and interactions which are bus and bus means it is a group of lines used to transfer bits between the microprocessors and the other components of the computer system and also bus it is used to communicate between parts of the computer there is there is only one transmitter at a time and only an address device can respond and for the bus it has three types which is address data and control control signals so now let's proceed to the second topic which titled the typical features of 32 bit and 64 bit so here i'll just tell you directly what i understood about this one so the 32 bit hardware and software systems at times it was referred as times 86 or times 86 to 32 it worked data in 32 bit pieces in contrast of 64 bit hardware and software systems or which also known as times 64 or 86 to 64 it used data in 64 bit pieces 
So theor theoretically speaking, the more data in general that can be processed at any one time, the faster the system can perform. So to simply put it, a 64-bit processor is more capable than 32-bit processor. It is because it can handle more data at once. A 64-bit processor is capable of storing more compu computational values, including memory, addresses, which means it, it's able to access over 4, 4 billion times the physical memory of 32-bit processor. And now we're down to the last topic, which titled the microprocessor application. So microprocessor help us in many ways. It somehow makes our daily life easier because of its low cost, low power, small weight, and vast applications in every field. So all those things you see, touch, and use in your home, outside, or even in our society were all contents of microprocessor. Microprocessor plays a vital role to all the applications. It helps application to work and for us to be able to use it and make it and make our life easier and faster. So we're done talking about the topic of lesson one and lesson two. So I hope you guys understood and get some knowledge about it. If not, you can watch the video again and again or have some time to visit Google to search for more information. So I hope you guys like it. Thank you.